All right, and welcome back to the third part of the Dofer A127 triple voltage controlled resonance filter demonstration. Um, in the last two, we kind of explored um, some processing. Uh, the first one, if you missed it, uh, was just the basic type setup where we're using the built-in LFOs, uh, triangle uh, LFOs. Uh, we got familiar with the settings and then explored a little bit of processing a drum loop with those um, kind of out of the factory settings. And then in the last one, part two, that uh, we did last time, we actually did a little bit of modulation of the cutoff of each one of the filters, but with different modulation sources. So last time around, we did the A145 uh, into a few of these inputs. Uh, and we also experimented a little bit with the A140 going into one of these inputs as well. Um, this time around, we're going to do a slight variation of what we did the last time. We're going to still use external sources to trigger modulation here at the uh, triple voltage controlled resonance filter, but we're going to actually use a patch or a variation on a patch that's in the manual for this module over here, uh, whereby a different sample and hold is fed into each CV source. Now I'm just using one sample and hold module, so I'm only gonna fill two of these CV inputs with sample and holds, but the third one I'm gonna maybe use an envelope or just a regular um, LFO. So let's get the patch going for that. Uh, now in order, I, I don't wanna go into too much detail about the sample and hold, uh, so I'm just gonna actually patch it. Uh, the first, thing in a sample and hold patch that you need is you need something to trigger uh, the sample and hold section. So for that, I'm going to use the, actually the clock being fed in from my MIDI CV interface. I'm going to feed it into the trigger in over here. Or actually, no, I take that back. What I'm going to do is plug it into my multiples. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Take my first multiple out, go into my trigger in right there, and then take my second multiple out, go into my second trigger in, so I actually have two separate sample and holds. Um, and if you did watch the sample and hold uh, demonstration, uh, you know that out of the factory, this module has uh, one of these set up for sample and hold, the other track and hold, but I've actually changed the jumper back to two sample and holds just for this demonstration, uh, in case you're wondering about that. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, I apologize, uh, maybe go back and watch one of those demonstrations, and we can go into more detail in that one. Um, so I have my clock being fed into there, uh, but I have no sample source yet, so that's why no little actions happening right there. So for my first sample source, uh, I'm going to actually just take a random voltage. Um, you're not going to be able to see necessarily the module, but it's the one right above this one, right up here. So I'm just taking the random output from my noise module up here. Uh, and I'm going to patch that into my sample in. Boop. And now we have a little bit of action going on right there. So that's going to be my first uh, sample source. And then my second sample source, I'm going to actually just use an LFO from here. And I'm going to choose a sine wave. Something a little different this time around. Patch that into my sample in on my bottom section of my, of my module. And as you can see now, both lights are going in their own little fashion. So in a moment, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the sample and hold outs of each of these and I'm gonna feed them over here to my triple voltage control resonance filter. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to get my loop started. Uh, I'm not 100% sure which loop I'm gonna do. Maybe I'll actually do both. So I'll do part of this demonstration with one loop, part of the other uh, with another loop. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my loop and then I'm gonna patch in my audio. Let me make sure bring down my audio levels here. So this is the amount of audio going into the filter. And I'm just gonna actually leave one turned on. Um, and then I'm gonna patch my audio in so we can hear what the dry signal sounds like. You can see that it's gonna be dry because my CV amplitudes are all the way down. So the LFOs that are here are not gonna actually be affecting the cutoff of the frequency. So it's just gonna be the manual settings that are, that are there right now. So at any rate, here is my drum loop. So that is our dry signal, or for the most part, dry, because we have one filter. But 
if you wanted to hear a dry signal, that's dry signal right there. Okay. And now let's uh, let's begin the patching here. So I'm going to take sample and hold out from the top section of my A148, patch right into filter number one, just because it's the closest. And I'm going to take sample and hold out from my second sample and hold at the bottom, and patch into filter number two, just like that. And so now we need a third modulation source. I haven't really decided which one we're going to use yet. Um, let's see, I have this LFO going into sample in. Yeah, let's just take a, um, maybe a saw wave over here. Yeah, let's do a saw wave. You might try this inverted saw later. So I'm going to patch that into number three over here. There we go. And so now I'm going to bring up the amplitude on my first one. Remember that's from my, uh, I believe that's from my top sample hold. Yeah, that's from my top sample hold. So here we go, bringing that up. We don't hear anything yet because the audio being fed to the filter is not there yet. So here it comes. And let me bring my resonance up so you can hear. Very different sound than what we had from the standard triangle wave. And if we wanted to hear what the standard triangle wave would be, let's just unpatch that for a second. That's standard triangle wave that's built into the module, so let's patch back in our random. That's my first modulation source. And now let's bring in the second filter. So remember, this is coming from a sample and hole being produced from a, I believe it was a sine wave that I chose over here. Yep. Oh, but I'm not actually bringing any of that in. Now we are. So we're just going by manual settings a moment ago. So let's actually hear it with no original and just affect it. So I can vary this patch in several different ways. I can either manually adjust the settings on here to change what's being modulated, or I can adjust, uh, if I wanted to just adjust filter two, I can adjust the rate of my, of my sampled source over here, going into then filter two, there we go. Bring back some of our original. There we go. And let's actually bring in third filter. And this one again, I believe it was just from a saw wave. Yeah. So there we have a standard modulation. We have some coming from LFO over here. Um, and then we have some coming from two of these sample and hold right there. Now I did say I wanted to show you the envelope generator as well. So I'm gonna actually unpatch that. So filter three is no longer being fed from the saw wave over here. We actually just patch it into the envelope. And for that, uh, gate is going to come from my MIDI interface over here, being then fed to the bus, which is then going to trigger my envelope. And you'll see the light flash down here, basically. So I have the output of my envelope going into filter three. I'm going to press it. And actually, I'm going to take it over into the high setting. Let's hear what that sounds like all by itself, just the envelope. So I'm gonna bring down filter two, bring down filter one. So we should only be hearing filter three. 
and the envelope being then fed into that. It's a really, really slow envelope, so maybe I chose too long of a setting, so let's maybe shorten it a little bit. And uh, let's just go to medium. Let's actually take the original out. It's very subtle. It just adds a little something to it. I want to make that a little longer. I can bring up the release. So something like that. Now I can bring my other two filters in. some of the original so we're not just listening to slightly filtered we're just getting a nice little blend all right i'm gonna go ahead and stop my drum loop i'm gonna unpatch this there we go and I'm going to cue up my second drum loop so we can listen to the same kind of sequence but with the second drum loop. So here we go. Here's our second drum loop. And there. Every time you see the light, it's triggering the envelope. That is a little demonstration of a variation on the sample and hold patch that is in the A127 manual. So if you get one of these modules, it might be worth checking out just for a little bit of variety. There's a few other interesting patches in there and as well as the uh, website that you can check out. Okay, so that is our drum and bass loop, uh, kind of a drum and bass loop. Uh, now, I am going to switch over and unpatch this to a, just a regular synth riff uh, that I created over here. So, so we hear what that sounds like. I'm gonna bring this down a little bit, turn off all my filters. So all we should hear here in a moment will be um, dry signal. So here we go, I'm gonna patch that in. Here we go. So that's dry signal right there. That sounds like. Now I'm going to start bringing in filter three. Bring in filter one. Filter two. Or just the infected signal. So there we go. Fairly interesting sound going on here. So now I believe that you can get an idea of what exactly uh, that patch can kind of open up for you. And there's tons of other possibilities and ways that you could vary this patch. But that's just one little variation. So now we've heard a couple different drum loops, and we heard now a synth loop going into this uh, module. We should have a pretty good foundation about what kind of sounds that you can get from this module. Um, I'm going to unpatch that, as you can see. Um, so, 
Uh, there's one thing that I uh, neglected actually to demonstrate, but uh, before I do that, let me just unpatch my sample and hold so I don't have all this kind of cable madness going on over here. Boop, boop, boop. You want to always be sure to grab onto the ends and not pull at the cable. So I've now unpatched my patch. So now we're going to create a new patch um, to demonstrate the last thing that I mentioned in the in the first section, or was it the second? Uh, where we're talking about audio rates um, and how audio rates can be fed into these filters, uh, but they're highly, highly sensitive to um, audio rates being fed in. So you're going to get some very interesting distortion because up until this point, we haven't really been exploring distortion too much. We've heard a little bit of self oscillation going on with this filter. Um, I had originally, I guess, intended a three part, but I guess we're going to extend it out to a fourth part. And just because I believe that there's still a few things that we need to explore. So um, I'm going to actually take a short kind of break and then we'll pop into part four of this demonstration here in a minute. So stay tuned for that and uh, we'll see you shortly.